But the fruit of the spirit is Hey Shockwave kids, welcome back to our church at home and uh, we're on our Sunday morning times talking about the fruit of the spirit You know thinking of fruit man. I wish I had a banana Ah, uh, Hey I wonder if I have a superpower to where if I wish hard enough, it, I, I could just get it. Hey, here we go, here we go. Banana, 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 banana. Hey! Hey, that worked. I wonder if it'll work for an apple. Okay. Apple, 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 apple. Oh! Oh, that didn't quite work. You know, no matter how much you want a piece of fruit, you can't just want it bad enough and it just suddenly appear. No, it has a process, uh, things that have to happen before the fruit will appear. A seed has to be planted, sunlight and, and rain has to fall and in order for the fruit to grow. But if those things happen, then there's, there's no like lots of strong work for the fruit to appear. It, will just appear on the tree if this other stuff has been done. And it's the same way with the fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about, is that uh, no matter how much we want the, these fruit of the Spirit, I want joy! Joy, 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 joy! Self-control, self-control, self-control! I must be patient! That we have to, it's about the time that we spend in prayer with God and the time we spend reading his word, kind of like the seed and the water and the sunlight for a plant, that if, we, if we're in God's word and spending time with him, these fruit of the spirit will, will naturally grow inside of us and in our lives. I tell you what, let's look at that verse again. Read it along with me. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That's Galatians 5, 22, 23. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, shockwave kids. Rocks can be really heavy, and man, they're a drag to carry around. You know, it's kind of like the stuff we can carry around sometimes on the inside. Things like bitterness. What they do to me? Anger. Ah! Evil speaking. You're a big fat duty head. Malice. When I get my hands on them. And wrath. I will destroy them. You know, we, we sometimes we, we try to act good on the outside. We, we try to do what we're supposed to do, but we have this stuff on the inside like a rock that's weighing us down. But you know what? I'm going to soften this baby up here. I'm tired of this heavy rock in my life. I'm going to turn on the molecular photon gun, the MPG. And see, this reminds me of what God wants to do on the inside of us. See, he promises us that in Ezekiel 36, 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. See, God doesn't want us to just act good on the outside. He wants to come and live inside of us and fill us up with this fruit of the Spirit until we're just overflowing onto everybody around us. I want us to get up and do something. See, we're talking today about gentleness and kindness, being gentle and kind, and ultimately how it's God that has to change us on the outside. But, you know, we have to put legs on our prayers. Sometimes we got to actually do it and do what 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 we're praying about. And so what I want you to do is to get up and find somebody to tell them something that you think is really amazing about them. Say some kind words to somebody. If you got a group there, go around taking one at a time, everybody telling something that you like about the person. Or if you don't have somebody with you, then get up and go find somebody, somebody around you and tell them, hey, I just want to tell you, you are really amazing because, and fill it in. But I'll wait for you right here. You can pause the video. 
You know, it's really awesome whenever we are kind to other people. In fact, these fruit of the Spirit, they're all connected with each other. And if you find yourself, for example, not having joy in your heart like you would like, um, if you start doing things like being kind to other people, you'll find joy starting to spring up inside of you. A lot of times people think that being gentle is being weak. But it's the total opposite. See, you can't be gentle unless you're really strong. Think of it this way. If you have a really big dog and a little puppy, you don't tell the little puppy, okay, be gentle, be gentle with the big dog. No, you're not worried about the little puppy hurting the big dog because he's too weak. But the big dog, oh, you're worried about the big dog hurting the little puppy. So you're like, okay, okay, be gentle, be gentle with the little puppy. See, in order to be gentle, we first have to be really strong and powerful enough to hurt something or somebody. And see, that's what God wants with this fruit of the Spirit. He wants us to be powerful and His power flowing inside of us. But at the same time, He wants us to learn how to use that power to help other people. Hello? Is someone else out here in my garden? <sighs> this is soldiers again. I'm going to take my stick and... Oh! Hey kids, y'all out here awful late. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's been a really interesting night. Soldiers running all through my garden and, and they're not being gentle with my flowers. It takes a lot of gentleness to grow beautiful flowers like these and a lot of care. And you got to think about what they need, not what you want to give them. Um, because like, for example, water, you can't just give them all the water that you want to give them. You got to give them how much they need. And oh, listen to me, I'm getting off on my flowers again. But tonight, I was telling you, we had a wild night tonight here in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, for those that don't know, I'm Nick. I'm the garden keeper here in, in Gethsemane, in the Gethsemane Gardens. But actually, this whole week has been a, a crazy week. Well, it usually is this time of year. See, it's Passover week, special festival in these parts that celebrates uh, going back to the Israelites coming out of Egypt and the death angel passing over and all that. But uh, everybody was coming into town at the beginning of the week, and um, Yeshua and his disciples, you could hear the crowd as they came into town over on the other side of town. You could hear it all across town as, as they, were, they were singing out, Hosanna, save us, save us. It was quite a commotion, and I heard he rode in on the donkey. Weirdest thing. But anyway... The night was Passover night. It was the actual night to celebrate the Passover, and Yeshua and his disciples had gathered together to eat. And then after the meal, like they do a lot of nights, they came out to the garden to pray. In fact, right over here, Yeshua was kneeling in prayer. It's a great place to get alone out here and quiet. And he was praying, but his, he wasn't quiet. Oh, something was disturbing him bad. I mean, it almost looked, I kind of poked my head out. It almost looked like blood, like he was crying blood. He was so upset. And he was crying out and he was saying, Father, if there's any way that this can pass from me, any way I don't have to do this. But nevertheless, your will, not mine be done. I don't know what he was talking about, but boy, he's in for something now. See, a little bit later, one of his disciples, Peter, came through and, and he was all terrified. And, and I slowed him down and I said, what's going on? And he said, we were done praying. Whenever suddenly we found ourselves surrounded by soldiers, the Pharisees, they've been wanting Jesus for years. They've been wanting Yeshua. They've been trying to trick him so they could kill him. And finally, they found out where he was praying at and they sent the soldiers out to capture him. And they drug him off. And whenever the soldiers came, they began to ask Yeshua, are you, are you the one? And he would say, yeah, yeah, that's me. And all the soldiers staggered backwards. And then they asked again, are you the one we're looking for? And he said, yeah, that's me. And all the soldiers staggered backwards. My, the, the power of his voice speaking. And Peter, Peter said that, he, that the disciples, they were thinking, yes, this is it. This is our time. We've been waiting for this. Yeshua is going to is going to finally rise up and kick the Romans butt and we're going to take over the world and these Romans that are so mean to us, he's going to beat them and he's going to kick them and just look at how they're falling back in his voice. And so Peter drew his sword thinking this is it. This is our time. 
and he slashed out at one of the servants of, 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 the, of the Pharisee priest that had sent the soldiers and cut the guy's ears off. And the guy was, ah! And Yeshua looked at Peter and said, Peter, put your sword away. This isn't, this isn't the time. I'm, I'm going with them is basically what, what he was indicating. And he reached down, picked the guy's ear up that had been cut up off the ground, this guy that was coming to arrest him, and put his ear back onto the side of his head, poof, like it had never been cut off. And at that point, as the soldiers came up and began to handcuff Yeshua, the disciples realized, oh, this isn't good. He's being arrested. We're all going to die. And they ran and left him there to be took off. Uh, I tell you, I, I, I don't get it. How can he be so gentle with the ones and so kind to the ones that were coming to arrest him? And uh, I can't imagine what they're going to do to him. Oh, it's not going to be a good night or a day tomorrow for him. I imagine they're going to crucify him. It's going to be bad. And surely he had to know that was coming. But yet, he was so kind and so gentle to pick the guy's ear up and stick it back on. Use one of his miracles to fix the guy's ear. Can't imagine that kind of gentleness. But anyway, I imagine we'll be hearing more about what happens to Yeshua. But for now, I got to get some sleep. It's late. Y'all have a good night. Oh. You know, it amazes me the power that we see that Jesus has in the story of his arrest. Because the soldiers can't even come close to him. He speaks and they stagger backward. He is the one that chose to be arrested. He's the one that chose to be put on the cross for us. And so we come to the end of our time today. And I just want to remind you that God wants to help you to be powerful, but in the power that he wants to give you, he wants you to be gentle to other people. And so, whenever you find yourself feeling like, Why you out of my room? Why you have to be so dumb? Remind yourself how gentle and kind God is to you. And remember, he wants to come live inside of you and to grow this powerful and amazing fruit of the Spirit in you until it is just pouring out of you, overflowing to all those around you. Tell you what, if you have enjoyed this time together today, if you would like and share it so it can spread to other people. Also, if you don't have anybody that's doing this with you, an adult, go grab them. Say, hey, come, look on gcogkids.com and you can find some additional ideas for devotional activities, some fun things to do together. And um, we're calling it hashtag reignite the fire of the home altar. But God bless. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah, control.